Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jeff from GIS Chops. With this video, I'm gonna show you how to symbolize the outlines of polygons based on a color ramp. It's trickier than you think. Then I'm gonna report on the Esri 2022 user conference, my experience there. Then I'm gonna go off on an old man rant about something that happened this past weekend. And I know you're just gonna say, okay, boomer, but I don't care. So stick around to see what happened this weekend to cause my blood to boil a little bit. So here I have a polygon layer that I want to symbolize just the outlines using a color ramp that has unique values based on a field in the layer. To do that, we need to open the Symbology pane. To get there, we have our layer selected in the Contents pane. And then if you're using 3.0, you're going to come up here to the Feature Layer tab. If you're using 2.9, that's going to be called the Appearance tab. That's something that they changed. So I click Feature Layer. And then I click Symbology. Because I want to base Symbology off of a field, I'm going to change this to Unique Values. But, you know, that's one way to do it, but it takes a lot of clicks. So I'm going to close the Symbology pane, undo this. Again, with my layer selected, if I come to the drop-down, hit Unique Values, it does all of that I just did in one click, or two clicks, I guess, instead of all of those others. It defaulted to the first field in my layer. I want to change that to be the name field. Now it adds all the values from my name field and symbolizes the interiors of the polygons based off of this color ramp. I want a bolder color ramp, so we're going to come down to this one. I want to remove this all other values, and you'd think you could right-click this. That's, that's not how you do it. You come up here to More, Uncheck, Show All Other Values. Now, to symbolize the outlines based on this color ramp, you would think you would come to More and do Format All Symbols. All you can do with this, it's, it's limited to just this tab. Usually there's a bunch of others here. I can change all of the outlines to be black, and their width. If I mess with this color, it's going to change all of them to a single color, and I don't want to do that. So you don't do it with the format all symbols. You do it using this gear up here. I'm going to apply to outline. Now the outlines are symbolized on this color ramp, but you can't really tell because the interior is also symbolized. So now I'm going to go to format all symbols and change this to be no color. Hit apply, and my outlines are symbolized on that color ramp. But I want to thicken it up to three, and hit apply. Now you can see that a little better. So there you go, you can now symbolize outlines based off of a color ramp. If you know a quicker way to do that, let me know in the comments. I'm always interested in being more efficient. I'll give you a shout out too. All right, now let's talk about the user conference. You may notice that I'm in a different shirt, got a haircut. I recorded my report on the user conference earlier. I just rambled for 10 minutes and I wouldn't even want to watch that. So, so I'll be brief. It was really good to be back in person. I don't know about you, but when it was online, it seems like the phone would ring or somebody would come into the office and then I was distracted, missed part and got out of the flow and just couldn't get back into it. So it wasn't as good online as it was in person. They had around, I think they were saying they had around 14,000 people there, which is short of their usual attendance. I think they get close to 20,000, maybe 18,000. But where else can you be with 14,000 people that know what you do? I mean, <laughs> there may be a handful where you work that know what you do. It's really cool to be there in person. If you're not able to go, you really ought to talk your boss into it because it can work out as kind of a reward to you for doing a good job all year long. And then also a boost to implement new things that you learn there at the conference or learn things that you've missed out on. They have evening socials and networking things. They have the Thursday night party, which can't be missed. A lot of times I piggyback a vacation onto it. We are close enough to drive, so we have taken our family along with us, or sometimes I just take my wife. But it was a really good conference. I learned a lot of stuff. I got a notebook full of things that I'm going to implement and try and work into my routines of editing and mapping. The Expo Center is huge. If you've got a project you're looking to outsource, there's somebody there that can do it for you. And you can also get swag. I've never really done that. I've 
met people who really come away with some really cool stuff, but I'm, I'm not I'm not willing to go let them scan my badge so that I get a bunch of junk mail. And they have the Esri Islands. They have an area where the staff that works on the parcel fabric or the local government solutions. The server team has a huge area. ArcGIS Online is huge. ArcGIS Pro is huge. So if you have a specific problem you're trying to work out, you can go talk to those guys who actually build the software and, and figure it out. And then the Thursday night party, they have live music. Different, different areas have different types of live music. Buskers are there. It's really cool. You gotta go check it out and talk to your boss. They're not willing to send you beg. I don't I don't know what you're gonna do. Try to get there next year. I actually got to meet some of you viewers. It was really cool to connect with you guys. Uh, I had a few people stop me in the hallways or actually one crossing the street. That was uh, Darby De I also interviewed Jeremy Zimmerman. He saw me in the hallway and stopped me and we talked for a bit. He's a really cool guy. He's one of those guys that gets all the swag. If you want to know the ins and outs of that, you got to talk to him. Maybe you can drop some comments on how he gets all that swag. <laughs> then at the party, I saw Connor Shack. He'd been texting me throughout the conference, and he finally saw me at the party. I also ran into Matt Beal at the party, talked to him for a bit. He works for a county in Georgia. He's been a commenter and subscriber for quite a while. And then the first day I... I took the Parcel Fabric pre-conference workshop and there was somebody in that conference that was a viewer, a subscriber. I'm going to butcher her name, but I'll give it a shot. Hodger Honor, I think. <laughs> She's really awesome. Got to talk to her a little bit. So it was really cool meeting all those people. Uh, it's always nice to hear that the content I create helps people out. If you enjoy my content, you can really help me out by subscribing if you haven't hitting the notifications bell so you know when my content publishes, and share with your friends and your colleagues. Watch all my videos, watch them to the end, comment on them, like them. Help me out by subscribing, liking, commenting. So this year I did piggyback a vacation onto this conference. I took my wife down, we drove down, and then on the way home we drove back up through the San Joaquin Valley, went to Visalia, went to Sequoia National Park, and then up through Fresno, and then to Yosemite. Yosemite was a bit interesting because we didn't plan very much ahead. Didn't realize we needed to have reservations. The place we had a reservation for our hotel was in the area where they had a wildfire. We did get in the park, but only after four o'clock. So we had two days of after four o'clock getting into the park. So we had to maximize our time there. Went on a really cool hike to Vernal Falls. It's a really cool place. If you haven't been to Yosemite or Sequoia, you need to go check those places out. They're awesome. Now here's my old man rant. We went to a concert at Deer Valley. It's an outdoor venue. The Utah Symphony performed with Guster, which is one of our favorite bands. If you're not familiar with Guster, you really need to be. They're a really cool group of guys, really great musicians, really great performers. They were with the Utah Symphony, and we got some tickets to go with some friends. Sat down, and the show started. I don't know if it's the symphony crowd or a Deer Valley crowd. I don't know what it is, but these folks sit there and talk through the whole performance. And if they're a symphony crowd, that's really disturbing to me because they definitely wouldn't do that in a Bravenal Hall. But, I mean, why do you come? Why do you pay the money to come if you're just going to talk through the whole thing? drives me nuts. We invariably end up next to somebody who's just chatting, doing the whole thing. There were four ladies in front of us. Two of them were on their phones the whole time. The other two just sat and talked to each other. Why pay money to do that? Go out to dinner! Okay, old man ran over. I know you're gonna say, okay, boomer. Go ahead, say it. I don't care. Flame me in the comments. I don't care. Do whatever. Just, when you go to a performance, shut up! Shut up and enjoy the show. Okay, I'm done. Sorry about that, but uh, you go to a show, you listen to the show. All right, that's it. I'm out. We'll see you next time. There I go, rambling again. <laughs>